Ukraine. Well, apparently, the UK is no longer a top-level fighting force. That was the warning from one US general who said that the British Army is now a shadow of its former self. And with the war in Ukraine raging, unidentified flying objects popping up here, there and everywhere, are we sure that Britain can really still defend itself? We certainly don't have the boots on the ground, troop numbers having halved since the Falklands War. And increasingly, we don't even have the infrastructure either. We've cut back on tanks, we've cut back on planes. We can't even apparently afford to replace them. Well, joining us now are security expert Dr Sally Leavesley and former Pentagon advisor on defence Elbridge Colby and former head of the British Army Lord Dannett to talk about this very serious uh, situation with the state of the armed forces. Uh, Lord Dannett, if I can come to you first, thank you very much for joining us. This situation with the state of the army in particular, uh, which has had quite a lot of uh, media debate over the last few days, um, I'm interested in how many uh, men and women you think would actually be at the ready to serve now uh, on the front line and, and the backup required if we had to go and defend ourselves. What, what kind of numbers are we talking about? Well, Isabel, I don't think numbers are really the issue. It's our equipment and our overall capability. I mean, there is no doubt that over the last 10, 15 years, there has been a significant underinvestment um, in our military overall, but in the army uh, in particular. So the criticisms that have come from, I think, are still anonymous American general and other criticisms have come are, are well placed. And I think the only encouraging aspect to this is that Ben Wallace, the Defence Secretary, really seems to get this and is arguing the case as much as he possibly can, that particularly in the light of a vicious land war in Europe, we need to increase our overall defence spending and particularly increase our defence spending, our spending on our land forces, on our army. I mean, you say that the numbers aren't the issue, and of course they're not the only issue, um, but the, the debate has long raged in defence circles as to the extent to which mass matters. Isn't the situation in Ukraine an illustration that mass actually does count for something? I mean, clearly the UK wouldn't want to treat its personnel the way that President Putin treats the people that he conscripts into the armed forces there, uh, almost as if they count for nothing and are utterly dispensable. But in the end, if you run your army down uh, to only a few tens of thousands, you may well have a problem in a situation where mass is important. Well, again, you're absolutely right. But I think we have to bear in mind that the United Kingdom, as a member of NATO, um, plays an important part in the overall European security. And actually, it's the role that we play with our other NATO European partners and, of course, the United States and Europe that is so significant. But there is no getting away from... Well, actually, the size of the army is falling to about 75,000 at the present moment. Um, when I was the chief of the general staff, it was over 100,000, and we were fighting two campaigns in Iraq and Afghanistan. But again, it's not so much troop numbers that matter, although they do matter in some ways. It's actually to make sure that those people have got the right equipment. There's no doubt about the leadership, the training, the motivation of British soldiers, but you've got to give them the right equipment. For example, you asked about numbers. We're currently only planning to upgrade 148 of our Challenger 2 tanks to Challenger 3, the next generation of improvement, if you like, to that status. Well, we've got well over 200 tanks, so why are we not um, increasing from Challenger 2 to Challenger 3 well over 200 well, tanks? That, and that, again, without being too specific, without I, being I guess, too Richard, specific, that's why we need to our up warrior the budget. infantry fight. Um, uh, I'd want to bring in uh, Elbridge uh, Colby. Of course, I mean, I, I won't. Um, yeah, yeah, Richard, of course, you're absolutely right. I mean, I, I won't make too many examples. I could go on for quite too long, and I won't do that. But, but you're absolutely right that we've got to increase the budget. The, the defence budget is around about 2%, just over 2% of GDP at the present moment. Last year, Boris was talking about raising it to 2.5%. Liz Truss, briefly, was talking about raising it to 3%. And Jeremy Hunt, the very spendthrift chancellor, Previously, I, I was talking about 3%. Richard, well. I suspect so we've got to increase our defence spending. That is for sure. 